What's up guys, my name's Brandon and it's crazy how quickly iOS 14 is approaching. And after sharing tons of leaks with you guys here on the channel over the past few months, we have a good idea as to what we can expect from the update. However, the release date for beta one has remained a mystery until today. So in this video, we're gonna discuss the release date for iOS 14 beta one, some additional new features that could be coming and more. And also don't forget that I do have a giveaway going on right now for two brand new 2020 iPhone SEs. You only have a few days left to enter into that. I will leave a link for that giveaway down in the description below. All right, so let's start off with the release date for iOS 14 beta one. So every year, Apple holds their Worldwide Developers Conference or WWDC. And with this conference comes the beta of the next major iOS release. And of course, for 2020, that major release is iOS 14. And normally Apple hosts the event in San Jose, California during the first week of June. But of course, with everything going on in the world right now, the pandemic, Apple canceled the in-person event and opted for a completely virtual event for the first time ever. And just today, Apple sent out a press release announcing the WWDC 2020 virtual event along with when it will take place. And as you can see here, it's going to begin on June 22nd. And this conference usually lasts five days. Apple did not say when it's going to end. They only said the beginning date of June 22nd, but like I said, it's usually five days, so we can expect it to end on June 26th, which is that Friday. Apple also says that the event will be shown in the Apple Developer app and on the Apple Developer website for free for all developers. Now, it's unknown if the event will be streamed to those who don't have access to the developer portal, but I'm sure someone will be streaming it for those who don't pay the $99 per year for access to Apple's developer portal. But of course, I will be sharing details with you guys when that date comes closer. I may even do a stream here on YouTube or something like that. We'll have to wait and see. And Apple also made sure to mention that there are going to be plenty of great opportunities for students, like always, with WWDC. And you can read more about that in the press release. I will have that linked down in the description below. So yes, June 22nd is the first day of WWDC this year. And that is when we should be receiving iOS 14 beta 1 along with iPadOS 14, watchOS 7, tvOS 14, and of course a new macOS. Now this date of the 22nd is of course a little bit later than expected. I believe my original prediction was on June 8th, the week of June 8th. So it is about two weeks after my original prediction, but of course that was pre-coronavirus and this whole outbreak going on. So that is kind of expected to see a minor delay in WWDC, even though it is online only. I'm sure a lot of the stuff that went into you know producing the event and everything had to get delayed a little bit. But as for new product announcements or anything like that at this conference, there's no word on that just yet, but we did just get a new product refresh yesterday, and that of course is the 2020 MacBook Pro 13 inch. So this was a pretty small refresh to the MacBook Pro line. Again, it is still 13 inches. It's not the 14 inch model that was rumored, but it does have the all new Magic Keyboard. It also has Intel's 10th generation chipset. It has a base 256 gigabyte SSD with the option to go up to a four terabyte SSD. It also has up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. And unfortunately, there is no Wi-Fi 6 support for some odd reason. So again, a pretty minor spec bump, but the big changes are going to be coming in 2021 with the ARM MacBook. So definitely stay tuned for those. I will be getting my hands on those come 2021. But anyways, let's move on to those potential iOS 14 features that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So just last week, a new patent from Apple appeared on the official US patent and trademark website. And well, it's a pretty interesting one. So we already talked about how some of these features could be a possibility, but now we have actual proof that it's being tested by Apple. And in this patent, we see features like the ability to edit iMessages after they've been sent, a way to easily acknowledge messages, a way to display private messages, translate foreign language text, and even a way to combine messages into a group. And this is on top of all the other iMessage features I mentioned in my previous iOS 14 leaks videos, which there was like at least three or four additional features, big features coming to the messages app. So Apple is really working on this. But anyways, the ability to edit messages after they've been sent will be a huge feature. And this image right here shows what this could actually look like based off of the explanation 
from Apple in this patent. So how Apple describes that this feature will work is by a haptic press on the message itself. And then right here in this menu, you will see an option for edit. So if you wanted to edit your message, I imagine you just haptic press on that message and there'll be a little edit button right there and you can edit it. And then when somebody sends you a message, if you wanna see the edit history, it'll say show edits and you'll just haptic press on their message right there. And you will be able to see what that person said before they edited their message, of course. And there will probably be some kind of asterisk somewhere or something like that to indicate that that message had been edited in the past. I personally have not used a messaging platform where you can edit the message itself. So I know WhatsApp has the option to delete messages from both people and iMessage doesn't have that. I don't know if iMessage will ever have that, but WhatsApp does not have the ability to edit a single text message. So that'll be very interesting if Apple does pull this off in time for iOS 14. Also included in the patent are details on applications and application management coming to the messages application, similar to what you get with WeChat over in China. So it's kind of hard to actually tell what the application support inside of iOS 14 and in the messages application is going to look like. Of course, it's not going to be just like these little add-ons, these little sticker packs when you click the A. That's not the type of applications that Apple is talking about in this patent, but it's kind of hard to get a visual of what that could look like. However, for the application management feature, Apple Insider did do this little mock-up right here that shows the way that Apple is testing for messages to let users quickly find launch and use applications and you can see by this image based on that explanation in the patent we could see almost like a separate dock within the messages app for launching certain applications and settings so of course this looks very weird and you can see down there there's like a, a snowman the music icon it looks like tic-tac-toe like a game maybe and then it looks like settings right there and then you can see reservations above so it's kind of hard to really tell how this is going to work but this could be very interesting to see applications and also application management inside of the messages app in iOS 14 or iOS 15, whenever this actually comes. Because once again, this is just a patent that was posted right now. We don't know when these features are going to be actually implemented into iOS for the public to use. But of course, we are hoping for them in iOS 14. But a feature that is for sure coming in iOS 14, according to 9to5Mac, is a feature called Clips, which allows you to use applications without fully downloading them. So for example, if you needed food delivered, but you didn't have like the DoorDash application installed, you could soon be able to just scan a QR code and get limited access to the DoorDash application and go ahead and order your food. So 9to5Mac says, quote, it allows developers to offer interactive and dynamic content from their apps even if you haven't installed them. The Clips API is directly related to the QR code reader in the build we have access to. So the user can scan a code, link to an app, and then interact with it directly from a card that will appear on the screen. So this is gonna be pretty interesting to see in action, and I'm assuming it's going to be very similar and maybe just a better version of Android's Slices feature, which is very similar to how this is sounding. And lastly, switching over to the iPads and iPad OS 14, the verifier is saying that we could see some small UI changes as as expected to the iPads with this update. So they're saying that the top line of information on the device, which is the status bar, is going to see refreshed designs with new icons. So I'm not sure if these are just new icons for like Wi-Fi and for your cellular or what, but I guess we'll have to wait and see on that. Now they're also reporting that we could see slightly more rounded edges to the menus and other UI elements in iPadOS 14, which would make sense because we already started seeing that a little bit with iOS 13 or iPadOS. 13. And I'm also hopeful that iPadOS 14 will finally bring the calculator app to the iPad, a native calculator app to the iPad, so we don't have to download an ad-filled calculator application from the App Store. So apparently the calculator has been present in internal builds of iPadOS for a while now, but hopefully it'll make its way to the public this year. So I'm sure we're gonna continue seeing iOS 14 leaks leading all the way up until June 22nd and the first beta of iOS 14, of course, given the early developer build that has been floating around for quite some time now. And that's where a lot of these leaks have been coming from is from that build and people digging through the code. So I'm sure we'll continue seeing more leaks all the way up until the first beta of iOS 14 is actually released. But that's pretty much the latest in the world of iOS 14 leaks. And the fact that we now have confirmation on iOS 14 beta one when it's actually 
actually going to be released is very relieving. That way people don't have to constantly keep asking me when we're gonna get iOS 14. So again, that is June 22nd. That is when we should be receiving the first beta of iOS 14. And if Apple does the same thing for iOS 14 that they did for iOS 13, the first beta will only be available for developers or if you just get a hold of the IPSW file, you may be able to do it, but we most likely will not have a profile until beta two. But of course, I'll keep you guys posted on all of those very specific details once we get closer to release day. And then of course, on release day, I'll probably be going live here on YouTube as well to show you guys, you know, me installing iOS 14 and going through my initial first impressions of the software and going over some features and things like that. So definitely stay tuned to the channel. Very exciting times coming within the next couple of months. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about those iMessage features that I mentioned here in this video. And just let me know in general, what are you most excited for with iOS 14? And also, do you think we're going to see any more products at the Worldwide Developer Conference next month? I don't know. It's kind of hard to say, especially since it's not like a live in-person event that makes me think there will not be products, but I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. There's just a lot of products that Apple actually has in store that they're waiting to release. So I could also see them releasing some there, but I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and of course, subscribe for a lot more iOS 14 coverage. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you soon.